potentially no pit stops in Project Cars 3. What is going on? Let's talk about it in this video. So, yes, Slightly Mad Studios, or should say Slightly Mad, now Project Cars 3 Codemaster Studios, <laughs> um, just did a dev blog update post where uh, they went over some new features or features that are going to be in Project Cars 3, aspects of what's in the game and everything. But uh, interestingly, towards the bottom of that dev blog post number one is uh, Nick Pope, principal vehicle handling designer, saying the following controversial statement. So, for example, by removing tire wear and fuel usage, we could in turn remove pit stops, which resulted in much closer and more consistent racing. Thus, the whole process of getting to the part that matters the most, the actual racing and driving of these amazing cars and their upgrades, became far easier and more streamlined affair. All these game design decisions have had great results in terms of the racing, with the tyres at their optimal range all the time and fuel optimal load. There's no break in the action to stop for more fuel or new rubber. It's pure racing action. And it's just made Project Cars 3 into a much better race driving experience. Is the kind of thing a developer would say to cover up not having pit stops. But, you know, guys, right, let's, let's be real here. So, for, first of all, we don't know if this is for the entirety of the game or just single player. And uh, if it's just single player and specific online modes... Uh, absolutely fantastic i totally get it i think it's perfect like who when you're if you're especially if you're new to driving sims or even semi-realistic driving games who wants to med mess around with setups what is the point of messing around with a car setup if you can't drive within three seconds of well you know even two seconds of lap time if you can't drive within two tenths every single lap it is literally pointless messing around with setups and uh, why bombard new people to this with like 10,000 options, which as rightly pointed out in the blog, and as I keep saying, but for some reason sim racers are deluded and don't understand this, in real life, a race driver, they, some of them do know setups and they will talk to the engineers, but a race driver doesn't necessarily have to know all the individual setups for every single little macro thing with the car to get the absolute most out of it. It's almost as if at the higher tiers of motorsport that they have co uh, setup analysts, uh, compute analysts, uh, stuff where they go through simulator stuff and then apply that to the car. And then the driver basically gets a car that's effectively technically as good as it's going to be. And the driver might say, oh, you know what? It's a little bit understeery here. Oh, I'd like this. And then, and then the engineer would change it. So in reality, the driver often doesn't actually do that much setup stuff. Certainly not as much as what's in a simulator, unless they're like a really budget arrive and drive driver. So yeah, not having setups isn't necessarily a problem and is an absolutely fantastic thing to get new people into, into driving simulation, realistic driving games. Um, Mm, the, the the thing is not having pit stops though um is a little bit interesting because again for single player it doesn't necessarily matter because you just want to get them onto into a race you know do a quality or even just do a race straight away progress with the single player unlock stuff nice and simple great fantastic makes perfect sense for a single player even for a realistic simulator game just let people drive and play you know they're there to have fun they're not there to look at excel spreadsheets um but, <laughs> so, if if this also applies to multiplayer and there's no pit stops at all, well, any race over 20 minutes is like, you've, you've removed that whole strategy of when you pit based off, you know, the strategy choices that you've made. So, for longer races... Well, that's that's gone. So if you're if you're a Project Cars 2 player that liked to do league racing and wanted Project Cars 3 to be something you could then move to from Project Cars 2, well, bad luck <laughs> if you did longer races. Um, I'd also say driving out of the pit initially when you first start playing it, go to a track and location, really helps ground you in the environment and makes it feel like you're at an event uh, and it's like a prelude, uh, the car before the storm. So getting rid of that entirely is is a bit weird because the pit lanes are modeled on these tracks so you know it's it's strange to just get rid of that it kind of it takes out the immersion a bit i think and that whole you know the process of joining the track it's kind of it's it's silly process but you know it's part of it it's part it's part of just getting onto the track it's nice it, it makes it feel like a real world location um 
obviously, you know, if you're just going straight into quality, straight into race, you, you don't necessarily need that. But yeah, so you're like, okay, if they've got rid of pit stops and they've got rid of setups, you're like, okay, I, I can see how that can work if it's the, even even if in multiplayer, I'm hoping this is ideally just for single player, but even if this was for multiplayer as well, I can see how no pit stops and no setups could work. But where this gets really confusing is in this developer post, they still say, you know, that there's the setup options there that were in the previous game and they've just optimized it more to make it easier to change setup stuff so it's like well hang on a minute we don't have pits there's no there probably no mid-race pit pit stops because of fuel and tires don't change but you can still do car setup stuff and then of course you've got the car upgrade stuff so it's like you've simplified it by getting rid of pit stops and reducing setups and things great totally makes sense but then you've complicated it by having completely arbitrarily designed car upgrade stuff. So picture it this way. You go into an online event and you're like, it's fixed setup. It's down to my skill if I'm going to win or not. But, oh uh, no, this guy's running the bipty bop front diffuser that he upgraded from this thing. And I'm using a flibbity flab front diffuser. Which one's better? I don't know. I better Google to find out what the absolute optimum car upgrade is which is what will happen if you're being competitive online obviously they could lock it all down and everything and i'm sure they're bop stuff but you end up with that same the same problems that you get with car setup and then as i say you still do have car setups in this so you still have the problem of i mean i think you they, they said you've got disc settings uh downforce and you know other setting options that, that you'd find in project cars too so it's like you've still got setups there so <laughs> it's like so when you look at it all the, it all comes out in the end to be like, oh, so basically you've got rid of pit stops because the upgrade system you've chosen, or probably pit stops are just a pain in the ass when it comes to getting AI to go into pits properly, and probably pit stops don't make sense for, for sprint races. But then that doesn't mean get rid of pit stops completely. <laughs> I don't know. It's just mad. It's just crazy, guys. Like the messaging on this game is all over the place. The, the crazy chase camera, 90 degree field of view intro videos. Uh, then, then the like cool drift leap video, uh, which, uh, which looked like the cars might have really nice handling over the limit. And I think the handling will be good in this. But it's like, how, what are you supposed to think of this game? Are, are you meant to like? I just don't know, guys. I just don't know what's going on. Um, part like. So what I'm hoping for Project Cars 3, me, is I really hope it's like l the perfect Simcade. So what I mean by that is that it's got the realistic handling and force feedback, which is the developers keeping assisting it does have that. They're setting all their posts and, and the messaging. Um, but it just has, it, it, you know, you can just jump in and race. So back in the day, um, when I started sim racing, there was, you know, there was like R-Factor 1 and everything, all this convoluted bollocks. Um, but live for speed, uh, you would just load up a server, you could grab a setup off someone, and you could just jump in and start racing. Um, GT Sport, for example, does a very similar thing now. You can just jump in, you don't need to know anything, you could just jump in and start racing. You notice in GT Sport, there's not many pit stops or anything. But the problem is, uh, Live for Speed is basically dead now. Still like three people playing it. And GT Sport, well, let's put it this way, the, the physics aren't exactly the most <laughs> realistic. So, um, if Project Cars 3 can effectively be a... You know, you can just get into it, race online, and it feels nice. I'm, I'm happy to sacrifice pits. I'm happy to sacrifice. I'll sacrifice everything. Sacrifice it all. Sacrifice it all. As long as it's fun to play, that's that's all that matters. Um, I'm not sure why they call it Project Cars 3, though, if they do do that. Um, you know, it is a little bit confusing. I can totally understand why Project Cars 2 fans, especially on the console side, would be really annoyed because they'll be expecting Project Cars three like project cars two but with more stuff in it <laughs> not not project cars oh it's not actually project cars it's sort of like a gt sport with good physics but um yeah this <laughs> is just total confusion guys i mean let me know what you think in, in the comment section do you think it's total madness uh i mean they are called slightly mad so it all makes sense um it, at the end of the day though it's, it's all going to come down to what the actual end product is what is it actually like when you play it as with all these developer things, you, you can't know until you play it. Developers will always say what they say. They've got a product to promote. And, um, you know, it could have the most realistic physics or the least realistic physics. If it's fun, it's fun. And that's all that matters. Um, I'm, I'm, looking forward to, um, I'm looking forward to the arguments. Um, 
I'm looking forward to triggered sim races. <laughs> I think that's the best thing with this is it's just pissed off so many sim races. And I like pissed off sim races. I, I think a lot of sim races are far too, they're too far up their bottoms. They're forgetting that they're playing games. They think they're playing actual driving real cars. And it's like, no, no, you're playing, you're playing a game that has cross... Well, we've been, in, we've been through this in other videos. There's utility to simulators. You can learn a lot from them that you can apply to the real world, but you're using them as a game. And so really, it's got to be the f fun. Fun fact is important, but that's, that's subjective. Anyway, wow, what a witter. Let me, go, let me know, guys, what you think in the comments. Um, but until the next one, uh, like, subscribe and all that business. Happy tea drinking and goodbye, everybody.